In this section, we'll continue a little bit from where we left off in the last chapter. We'll be graphing linear inequalities. First, we'll look at how to tell if a point is part of a solution. So again, remember that the point is x and then y. So we'll put 1 in for x and 5 in for y. And we have to ask ourselves, is that 6 greater than 6? And it's not greater. It's equal to, but it's not greater. So this is no, this point is not a solution. So we'll try this now. We'll put 5 in for x and 6 in for y. We're trying to see, is that bigger than 6? Well, 11 is bigger than 6, so this is a yes. Here we'll put negative 3 in for x and 10 in for y, and we're trying to ask ourselves, is that bigger than 6? Well, negative 3 plus 10 is 7, and 7 is bigger than 6, so this is also a solution. So when we graph linear inequalities, we graph the line as we would if it was an equation. We use a solid line if we have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and a dashed line if we have greater or less than. Then we'll test a point that's not on the line. If it's true, then we shade the side that contains that point. If it's false, then we shade the other side. So here's our first example. We'll graph the line y equals 3x plus 2. So that means we would put a point at 2 on the y-axis for the y-intercept, and then we would go up 3 over 1 to get our next point. We could keep doing that. Now, the next thing we need to do before we do anything else is recognize that this just says greater than. It's not greater than or equal to. So we need to make our line be a dashed line. And then finally, we need to shade it. So we're going to choose a point that's not on that line. And we'll mark it here. Let's say we choose this point right here. That's the point 2, 0. And that's the point we're going to test. Remember that this is x and this is y. So we're saying, we're asking ourselves, is 0 greater than 3 times 2 plus 2? So is 0 greater than? 6 plus 2, and well, it's not, it doesn't work. So the side where we put that x, where that point is, is not shaded. We would want to shade the other side. The idea is that if this point doesn't work, there will not be a point on that same side that will work. They will all be false. But that means that everything on this side, every point over here, will work. It will make this true. Now let's look at another problem. This works the same way. We're going to start with this as if it was equal to. And we're going to solve for y just like we did before. So that we can graph this more easily. And we'll divide everything by a negative 3. So we have an 8 thirds x minus 8. So we'll graph that over here. We'll have a negative 8 right here. And then we would go up 8 over 3. Up 8 over 3. Then we need to go back and we need to look and we see, okay, well this is just greater than, so that means my line needs to be dashed. So we'll go back in and we'll draw our line like that. So now we'll test a point. We can choose any point we want that's not on that line. Um, zero, zero is a nice one to choose. It works easily to test. So we'll go back to our original problem, and we'll put in 0, and we'll see if we get something that is true. 0 times 8 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, so we're asking ourselves, 
is 0 bigger than 24? And the answer is no. So remember that if that point doesn't work, nothing on that side works. And we want to shade the other side. So we'll do one more, or actually two more, but we'll look at this problem next. And again, we're going to look at this first um, as if it was 0, or equal to 0. So we have 3y, we'll add 21 to both sides, 3y equals 21. Then we'll divide both sides by 3, and we get y is greater than, or y is equal to 7. Remember, that's a line that crosses the y-axis at 7. Now again, this is just greater than, so we want a dashed line. So we'll put a dashed line at 7. So now we need to shade it. So we um, go back here, and we just need, there's only a y in the equation, so we just need a y to check. So let's check 10. So if we have 3 times 10 minus 21, we're asking ourselves, is that greater than 0? 3 times 10 is 30, minus 21 is 9, and 9 is greater than 0. So because that point works, every point up here will work. We want to shade where that point was. Okay, so let's look at this. This is really a system of linear inequalities, and so we um, have to graph them and look at the answers together. So first of all, we'll look at x um, is less than or equal to 5. So we want to graph x equals 5, and we'll notice it says less than or equal to, which is a solid line. So if I graph that, it crosses the y-axis at 5, and I want a solid line right there. So now, um, when this x is by itself, we can just look at that. x is smaller than 5. So which way do we go to x's that are smaller than 5? Well, smaller than 5 would be this direction, right? So let's just kind of lightly shade in that direction from that line. So now let's look at the other line. And it's a y is greater than negative 7, right? So we're going to graph the line y equals negative 7. This tells us it's going to be dashed. So it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 7. And it will be a dashed line. Okay, now this says y is greater than 7. So bigger than 7 would be up from that line. So that means we'd be going up from here. Now our final answer, though, is really looking at where those two areas overlap. So it's a little bit like, uh, um, like the AND statements that we did in Module 7. So where they overlap is right here where we see both the red and the blue. So it would go up to those lines, it wouldn't cross those lines. So this red shading down here, we wouldn't really want. We wouldn't want that blue shading over here. It's just where the two shadings happen together.